Hello and welcome to another technical feature overview. This segment is about the iDNS module which stands for Intelligent DNS and more specifically it covers a deployment where the DNS records are hosted externally. We know that iDNS enables us to have inbound link balancing so the first component is to have resources behind the link balancer that we wish to make available on the internet. We also need to have the ability to make modifications to the externally hosted DNS records as well as make modifications to the Elphic link balancer configuration. First we'll take a look at how an enterprise would typically make its resources available to internet users. Here is an internet user that wants to get to www.example.com within the enterprise. The first step is for that user to make a DNS request which will end up going to an externally hosted DNS service. The user will ask what is the IP address for www.example.com. The externally hosted DNS service would reply with an IP address. This is because typically there's an A record to define that resource record. The following step would be for the user to actually make a connection to the IP address and then get to the actual resource. Now that we've seen how DNS works in its most basic form, let's take a look at a similar deployment with an Elphic unit installed as well as an alternate link. Here's that same scenario again, although we've added an Elphic link balancer as well as a secondary link from which connections can come in from. We've also made some modifications to the externally hosted DNS records. This is an important step for iDNS to work. We used to have an A record which would define www.example.com into an IP address of 194.204.1.25. is to eliminate that A record and instead create a subzone or a subdomain with the same name as the host section of the previous A record fully qualified domain name. As such, instead of having an A record for www.example.com, we will have a subzone called www within example.com. And as you can see here, we've delegated that subzone to two name servers vdns1.example.com and vdns2.example.com we've also defined those name servers with a records vdns1.example.com has an a record pointing to 194.204.1.5 and vdns2.example.com has an a record pointing to 212.217 dot one dot five. You'll notice this is an IP address from the secondary link. We've also prepared the Elphic unit with a configuration. That configuration states that the link balancer will listen for DNS requests on 194.204.1.5 and 212.217.1.5. So inbound DNS requests destined for those addresses will be analyzed. We've also configured the link balancer to have possible A record resolutions. So for www.example.com, the link balancer may answer 194.204.1.25, as was the case when hosted in the external DNS service, but it may also answer 212.217.1.25 in case the primary link is down or if the secondary link offers a better service. Also note that there are NAT rules that will NAT the traffic sent to 212.217.1.25 back to 194.204.1.25 because that's the only IP address that the firewall will understand and forward to the correct web server. Now that we understand the setup, let's go ahead and see what happens when that same user requests an IP address for www.example.com. The hosted DNS service will not have an A record. Instead, they will have a subzone for Triple W. So they will say Triple W is a subzone whose records are maintained by these name servers vdns1.example.com or vdns2.example.com. 
the user will be asked to make their DNS request to VDNS1 or VDNS2. Note that the top-level DNS server will usually provide the user with both NS choices and the user site application will choose one of those records. In case of a retry, the choice is usually made in a round-robin fashion. So the user has chosen to ask the question to VDNS1 but needs to know what the IP address is for VDNS1. So the user asks the externally hosted DNS service, what is the IP address for vdns1.example.com? The answer for that is 194.204.1.5. The user then asks, what is the IP address for www.example.com? And that DNS request goes to 194.204.1.5. It is channeled through the internet and reaches the Elphic unit on the primary link. Now again, this is random, that DNS request could have gone through the secondary link. The Elphic unit, as we said earlier, was listening in for DNS requests on that IP address. The next step is that the Elphic unit will evaluate the best link for the upcoming inbound traffic based on link conditions and or configured preference. As we see in this case, there was a preference to have that user come in through the secondary link. So the user's initial request was to get an IP address for www.example.com and the Elphic unit has completed that request by answering that the IP address for that resource is 212.217.1.25. The final step is that the user actually connects to that IP address, the 212.217.1.25 which then is translated by the Elphic unit back to the original IP address of 194.204.1.25. Thank you for your interest in this technology. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 888 go or send us an email to info at elphic.com.